Hey guys, what's up? I'm back and sorry for the long absence. I'm trying to get through my cold and everything and now I think I'm ready to go. So the next thing we want to talk about is, is numbers and Python. And um, we've already looked at what a string type is and we saw that we could take a string and we could actually make an HTML file with it. And even though some of these larger concepts aren't going to be there yet, that's not a problem. Don't worry about it. But one of the things that we do want to focus on is that numbers are completely different from strings. In programming languages, these types are, like I said, very important, even though you don't have to necessarily know how they work or how they're made. In fact, I don't even know how like they're really formed from the lowest level. I mean, I really don't. Um, but I do know that there are different types, and you can do different things with a number type, and you can do different things with a string type. So if I were going to have a number in Python, it's, it's, it's super easy. My variable could be my number equals and then just a number. So here's the number two. And obviously this allows us to do mathematical comp computations and things like that. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a separate file. So we're not going to put anything inside here. We're going to create a new file in our Python uh, editor. So I'm going to click on this little new file icon and we'll just call this numbers. Py. So in here, I just want to say um, x equals. You know, we're not even going to do that. We're going to say print, and then you can see eight plus or eight times eight, which is sixty-four, right? Hopefully, I'm right about that. Um, and we're going to just press uh, the debug. So one of you guys asked me. Um, somebody said that I, I don't have the icons and all this stuff. Well, you have to make sure you're in the little debug mode. You also have to make sure you have your Python extension installed. It looks like there's already an update. I don't feel like updating it right now, but when you're in your little debugger and you have your, your file selected here, you should have this play button and then you can start, you just press play and it's it's up there and it's it's running and it's gonna actually print to this debug console down here. Uh, it actually stops on the first line for some reason, I think. There's a bug actually. I don't know why it's doing that, but um, if I just press Control F5 or I think even just F5, it'll it'll run through without actually stopping on the first line there. But you can see it prints out 64. So Python's able to do mathematical computations, and if you try to do something like a humongous number in your uh, calculator, you probably wouldn't be able to get the result of a number this big in a, in a typical calculator. In fact, I'm almost 100% sure you couldn't. And if we tried it in Python, let's see what happens. So I'm going to press Control F5 to run the program. And we get that humongous number. So just that quickly, Python figured out two relatively humongous numbers. So that's what, 8,888,888. 8, so let's go ahead and do, uh, that's 800 million. In fact, let's go into a billion actually. So we're going to, so we're basically saying uh, these, are, these are now billions now. And we'll go like this. I could also just press the uh, the loop button as well in the editor. So you can see we get an even bigger number. And I, if I wanted to run the program over again, I could just press that, that rerun button. It'll it'll run over again. But it, once again, it stops on this breakpoint, which is really weird. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know if it's a setting on my end or if it's just an update uh, that, that may have broken the way this works. But... I'm assuming and I'm hoping that when I update this, it'll stop doing that. But maybe you guys can tell me if, if you have that same problem or not. But anyway, the, the point is here is that this is a number. This is not a string. And numbers are extremely important in programming because not only are you doing mathematical computations if you start getting into like video game programming and things like that, um, but you know, math is obviously the one thing that can pretty much explain the world around us. You know, like when you do complicated math, I mean, you could you can visualize things. And an example of that is, uh, let me share something with you. So I love this question on Stack Exchange for math because, like, this is showing you, like, the, these way. It's just it's just amazing if you go through this link here and uh, and look at some of these math concepts. I could tell you pretty much every one of them is over my head. Um, I, I haven't, in fact, I, I still need two math courses and my to get my two year degree. So that like I'm not an advanced math whiz or anything like that. But the point is, is all this stuff is math and it's all numbers and and it's capable. Numbers are capable of of solving very very interesting things. You know, like uh, if we break down the world around us into like mathematical computations, it can literally explain things and why things are the way that they are. 
So it's it's pretty amazing. So that all said, numbers can't be strings. They have to have their own separate functionality, and that's why they are their own type. So an example of uh, why we would, you know, why we would use something like this in a in a programming sense is like, say I went to YouTube, and I'm at this. Uh, I'm just picking a, a popular song with 182 million views, and and you can have this copy video URL at a certain time. So if I right click on the video and I, I copy at the current time, and if I paste that into my program, you can see that here's the link at time T90. So what if I, this could all be a string right here. So what I could do is I could say uh, YouTube URL equals, and I'm gonna take this entire part right here, and we're gonna put this inside of a string. And then I can say, and we could say uh, time equals 90. So now the interesting thing is that I could simply have this all be in one string and this would work. So if I were to put this URL on the web page, so I'm just going to paste this particular string portion and I'm going to put that in our first file. So instead of going to hipster code, I actually want the link to open up into the YouTube video and I can just do that by pasting that YouTube link in there. And if we run this, this program, I'll just press control F5 again and we go to the folder where it's being output in. I can say reveal and explore and that'll open up my, my Windows Explorer. To show me where the file is. So if I click on this and I click on me, it should take me directly to FIOS is not cable. We're wired differently, which means we can fix things differently. Thanks for calling FIOS. So you can see that it went right to the time that I wanted it to go to. So that's all great. And you're probably like, well, why would I need an integer then? or a number and uh, uh, by the way some programming languages call them numbers some places or programming languages call them integers you're going to hear them used interchangeably which means either way it doesn't matter but it means the same thing uh, at least in python so in this number here you're, you're probably like well why couldn't i just use it as a string and the the problem is is that if you don't have to manipulate 90, you could just use it as a string. It, it would work no problem. So if I went here and I said, um, we'll say time equals 90. And then um, I could say, so the problem comes in though, is when you're like, you know what? I have this value 90, but I need to add 20 to it. So how do I add 20 to it? I can't do that with a string. And right now this, this 90 is just part of a string. It's not a number. So this has to be a number. So that means that you're going to create a variable that is your number 90. And then if you wanted to add to it, you could say time equals, and then say time plus 20. So now time is going to be 110. So we've changed the value of time. And the interesting thing here is that we've actually, we're looking at um, an actual mathematical operation where we're taking the existing value of time, which it's 90, and then we're changing it. So if I actually put a breakpoint on here so we can visualize everything that's going on, I'm gonna stop this. And I, I just wanna, I wanna save Control S and then we'll go ahead and, uh, and run this so I can see. I wanna make sure you guys are fully aware of everything that's going on here. So we're, we're at time right now, if I press F10, it'll take me down to the second line. If we hover over time or we look over here, I could add this to the watch. I'll say add to watch. So we know time it, right now, <clears throat> as of the third line in our, in our program, time is still 90. But now what we're doing is we're saying, hey, time, you're, you're the value, you're a number 90. But we're going to say you're going to be your, your value now plus 20. So watch what happens to time. Now it's 110. So you can see the pro program change. But now how would I reference that inside my my link to then, you know, re to go to a different section of that video. The thing is, is you would have to use integers and strings together in order for that to happen. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to say, you know what, instead of you being here, we're going to, 
we're going to actually do a double quote and we're doing a string concatenation again. And remember how we did it in the first video, we actually um, added two strings together by using the plus symbol. So this isn't a mathematical plus, this is just string concatenation, it's string merging. But what we can do is we can actually reference a number value or variable, I mean, and I can put that right here. So we can say time. So we know time is gonna be a value of 110. So instead of this being 90, it's going to be 110. Now, the one, the one thing that's going to be interesting about this is that Python is going to complain because you can't just add a string and an integer or a number. And they're completely separate types. So Python will run into uh, an issue, or at least it should. Some, some programming languages actually infer uh, or just try to predict what you're trying to do, and it doesn't actually cause a problem. And in case, um, so I was actually... Uh, wrong about this because I actually thought it would throw an error and it looks like it's not going to or no there it is okay so it did throw an error good because I was about to be like damn it this is like because literally some languages will just try to figure out what you want to do and those languages are generally considered to be bad programming languages when they try to just in infer or predict what type you're trying to turn something into. A language that does that is actually PHP and Perl. And that drives people up a, a wall when, when they're learning when like actual like skilled programmers that are like, you know, trying to make an art out of all of this, they're like, you can't do that and blah blah blah. In many cases you shouldn't do that probably, but it's really not that big of a deal. But anyway, Python will not let you. It says, hey, there's a type error. And we once again we've looked at types. It says you can't convert an integer object to a string implicitly. And what it means is if, if I were to, if Python were just to let that occur and turn the, the number to a string or turn a string to a number, we know the string can't turn to a number, but we know the number can turn to a string. So that, that's probably complicated the way I just said that. But when we had the original value 90 in here, that was a string value, but 90 can be a string. So, but, in a, a str but this sentence can't be a number. We know this this sentence and HTML and head and all that stuff, that can never be a number. But what we, we can safely say, you know what, time can be a string. So in order to just say, hey, hey Python, it's okay to turn time to a string, we do this. We say str and then in parentheses, we wrap it around time. And what we're doing is we're saying, hey, time value, we're turning you to a string type. And now this will actually work, no problem. So let's run our program. And I'll step through it line by line again. So we look at time, it's 90, now it's 110. And now we've, we've created my variable and here's my variable. So it exists just fine. And if we look at it, uh, if we look at the, the full value, you can see that the, ah, oh, frig it, um, don't worry about it. Anyway, you can see that it, it's, it's fine. So when we write out to the out file, uh, I'll go ahead and play. Now we can open up our HTML file. Look in the file. All right, so if we look at the link, let's click on it. And now you can see. When Whirlpool builds an appliance, they put everything they know into it. So, so you can see it, t it takes us right to 110. So that is the, the combination of why you need numbers and why you need strings and why they're two separate things. That's just one small example, but eventually you're going to be writing stuff and, and you're going to be converting numbers to strings and and you're going to, we're going to look at some other types too, and you're going to be converting other types to strings or to, to numbers. And, um, it, it gets, it gets, you know, quite a bit complicated as we go down the road, but I think, you know, in this case, I just wanted to explain why a number is different from a string and, and, and just try to harp on this whole, you know, this whole concept of, of why we have types in programming languages. Um, and just to cap out this, uh, this video here, I want to go ahead and just show you that Python has some of the, the basic, uh, you know, 2 plus 2. So that's how you would do addition, print, uh, 2 minus 2. That's subtraction, print, 2 times 2, 
print two and divided by two. So divided by is this forward slash, or that might be a backward slash. I always get those confused. Um, <clears throat> but the point is that, yeah, yeah, it's a forward slash actually. So that's uh, the division. And then there's also this modulus thing, but let me go ahead and run these real quick and you guys can see. All right, now here's an interesting thing that we're gonna get into. We're not gonna touch on it in this video, but this is kind of like a number, but it's actually called something else, and we're not gonna get into that because it's a completely different type, but it's related to numbers. But it's when you need to start getting more precision, because remember, when you look at those mathematical concepts I shared in that, that video, you start getting into some really complex math. And uh, believe it or not, Python is actually a very popular language to be doing a lot of that numerical computation. Even though it's not the fastest language in the world, it's one of the easier ones to work with. So it, it's, it's used by NASA and, and a lot of different sciences and uh, bioinformatics where they're like taking genes and you know mapping out the human genome and the Neanderthal genome and all that. So a lot of that's being used by Python and, and language is similar to it because of its ease of use. Um, but yeah, that, that's a different, different type that we'll look at later. And... Um, Yep, and now that's that's about it. So uh, part of the uh, the mo the uh, math t t stuff when we look at numbers in Python, um, there is something called the remainder. And one of the trick programming questions and in programming interviews is the modulus operator. So the modulus operator, it's just the, uh, the the percent sign, but the percent sign actually returns the remaining amount when you divide a number. So <clears throat> if I said print uh, we'll say, we'll say three, uh, I'm sorry, three modulus of three. So if I went ahead and I'm going to stop this, press control F5, you can see it's zero. It's because three is divisible by itself. So if you guys know about prime numbers and things like that, if you were ever trying to figure out if, uh, you know, if, if this is a, a prime number, then like 9 divided by 3 is obviously going to be 3, so it's a prime number, and it's going to return 0. Okay, and now what if we said something that isn't divisible? So we could say like uh, 8 uh, modulus 3. So this is actually going to return 2. So the reason why it returned two is because it, it's it's called the modulus operator or it could be called the remainder operator. But when you say eight divided by three, you get six, right? And how much is left? Two. You can't divide it by three, so it just returns the remaining amount. It's actually a pretty com a com um, common mathematical concept, but something that I never touch in the web world. It's It's interesting because a lot of trick programming questions for kids coming out of college they'll they'll ask them about something like this and for experienced web programmers that aren't doing games and, and mathematics and stuff like that they don't you know they don't use this operator very often and they might scratch their head and like oh shit how do i do that you know so it's one of those things so it's it's definitely something i want to convey to you guys especially if you try to take this programming thing you know as a, a professional full-time gig which i'm i'm assuming all if not uh, most of you guys are, are trying to do that um, anyway guys that is the video on numbers so thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel please share it with your friends your family your relatives which is the same thing as your family uh, i'm just kidding do what you want with it but um thanks guys have a good day bye